Yo, what's good everyone? Happy Monday. Hope y'all had a great weekend. Today I'm going to be breaking down the NHL DFS slate for November 28th. We got ourselves a six game slate here to kick off the week where I'm going to go through a couple of my favorite line stacks, some of my favorite individual plays, and some of my favorite value plays, and then we'll wrap up the video talking a little prize picks. With that being said, let's dive into my spreadsheet here. And we're going to kick things off here like we always do in the top left hand corner with those highest implied game totals. We got three of these games coming in with an implied total of six and a half goals. The other three games coming in at six goals even. And then take a look down here at the Vegas odds where you can see the teams who are favored to win here tonight. With that being said, let's dive into a couple of line stacks that I like here for tonight. Starting with that first line for the Vegas Golden Knights, we got Eichel centering Stevenson and Stone. Was actually a little surprised at how affordable this first line was considering the matchup here against the Columbus Blue Jackets who are one of the worst teams in the NHL. They've allowed 4.20 goals per game this year, the second most across the league, with a penalty kill that's just hit at a 77.6% rate. This first line here is very strongly correlated. Not only do they play big minutes together 5-on-5, five five, but all three play up on that number one power play too, and they've been very good for Vegas this year. Eichel leads the team with 26 points, Stevenson's third on the team with 19 points, Stone fourth on the team with 18, but he actually leads the team in expected goals. So the chances have been there for those guys. They're finding the back of the net, and the chemistry is really solid between the three on top of playing big minutes together. And then another line stack I like here tonight is that first line for the Dallas Stars. We got Hint centering Robertson and Pavelski. Another very strong correlated line stack here where the three play big minutes together five on five, and all three play up on the number one power play, which has been very good for Dallas this year, scoring at a 29.2% rate. That is the fourth best power play in the NHL. NHL. This is a great matchup for them against the St. Louis Blues, who have not only allowed 3.52 goals per game, but have the third worst penalty kill in the league, just hitting at a 68.8% rate. And these three numbers have been great all year long, especially as of late, where they've combined for 10 goals, 8 assists, 18 points in just their past five games. Now, folks, before we dive into some of my favorite individual plays here, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. I'm going to have hockey content coming out for you guys all year long. For those of you who are on Discord, if you want to join my channel, there's a link in the description below to do that. We got quite a few people in there talking some puck. And for those of you who are on Twitter, if you want to give me a follow here, I'm occasionally posting some NHL bets there too. All right, now diving into some of these individual plays here, we're going to kick it off with the Fords. First guy I got there is Leon Drysuttle of the Edmonton Oilers. And it looks like they got him playing up on that first line right now with Connor McDavid. Obviously, those guys play on the number one power play too. I'm going to have no problem stacking those two up tonight considering the matchup at home against the Florida Panthers who have not been very good defensively here as of late, allowing 4.40 goals per game over their past five. That's the third most in the NHL during that stretch of games with a penalty kill that's hit at just a 72.2% rate. And this Oilers team, especially McDavid and Drysuttle, do play well at home. Drysuttle himself has seven goals, 13 assists, 20 points through 11 home games this year. Damn near averaging two points per game and they by all means have multiple point upside in this matchup here tonight. Next I got Dylan Larkin there of the Detroit Red Wings who are currently riding a four game win streak right now and playing some very good hockey including Larkin himself where he's racked up two goals to assist four points in those four games with 21 shots on net. Honestly, I almost highlighted that first line of him, David Perron, and Dominic Kubalik as a line stack tonight, especially considering all three of those guys play up on the number one power play, which has been lights out during this four-game win streak, hitting at a 42% rate. Now, I'm not suggesting that's sustainable going forward, but when you're hot, you're hot, and that's Detroit right now. Albeit, it is a tougher matchup at home tonight against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm not going to be afraid to ride those guys out. Now, there's some really nice value at the four position tonight in the 4-5k to 5K range. One guy who stuck out to me here in the 5k range was Jordan Cairo of the St. Louis Blues. This guy's playing awesome hockey right now and just his past five games he's racked up three goals, six assists, nine points, damn near averaging two points per game where he's also had 21 shots on net, averaging around four shots on net per game and although this Dallas Stars team has played very well here this year, they're not playing very well defensively as of late. In their past six games they've allowed three and a half goals per 
game with a penalty kill that's hit at just a 78% rate. Now, Kyrou's going to play down on that second line tonight, but plays up on the number one power play and should log around 17 minutes. I then got Mitch Marner there of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I just mentioned how well the Detroit Red Wings are playing right now, and they are playing some really good hockey, riding that four-game win streak where they've gotten some really good defensive play and some solid goaltending. But Marner here at $5,400 just doesn't make sense for a guy who's riding a 16-game point streak right now where he's racked up 22 points with 5 goals and 17 assists. I just don't understand why he's not in the mid-6K range, so I'll take him at a discounted price here, albeit a tougher matchup on the road against Detroit, who again is playing some really good hockey. We're going to see Marner play on that second line tonight, play up on the number one power play, and should log around 19-20 minutes. And then one of my favorite opportunity plays here tonight in the low 4K range is Brandon Hagel of the Tampa Bay Lightning, who continues to play up on that first line with Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov, while also getting time on that number one power play play. He's playing with too many talented players not to like at this price, and he's made the most of that as well. He's now got 15 points through 20 games. We take a look back here at his last 10 games, three goals, six assists, nine points. So he is playing some consistent hockey, but it ultimately just comes down to the opportunity that he's getting considering the price. Now moving over here to the defenseman, and at first glance, I wasn't in love with the Florida Panthers, especially considering they are going to be missing Alexander Barkov tonight, their best forward and best player at that. But I do like the matchup here against the Edmonton Oilers. We all know that they can score goals, but defensively, they're not very good. Goaltending has been suspect at best. Their penalty kill has not been good this year, just hitting at a 73.2% rate. So I don't mind Florida here tonight. One guy that did stick out to me was Aaron Eckblad here at $5,700. He's been awesome this year. Four goals, four assists, eight points in 10 games. Averaging over three shots on net per game and around one and a half block shots. So he can rack up DraftKings points in a number of different ways. And he's a guy who logs around 24 plus minutes per night. So yeah, I don't love that they're going to be missing Barkov here tonight, especially on that number one power play. But considering the matchup, I still think they're in play. Now, I understand that Victor Hedman is not playing up on the number one power play for the Lightning right now, but I don't know if I've ever seen him this cheap here at $5,400. He certainly hasn't been that cheap this year. The other cheapest price tag we got for him was $6,300, and that was just last game. But this is still a guy who's logging around 24 minutes per night, plays on the number two power play, plays on the penalty kill, and has 10 points through 18 games. So considering the massive discount we're getting here on one of the best defensemen in the NHL, I'll take advantage of that. I then got Philip Bornick there of the Detroit Red Wings, and very few defensemen are playing better hockey than he is right now, and no defenseman in the 4K range is playing better hockey. He's racked up six goals, four assists here, 10 points in just his past six games, where he's hit 15 plus DraftKings points in five of those six games. He's logging around 23 plus minutes per night, getting time on that number two power play, and getting time on the penalty kill too. He should absolutely be priced in the mid 5K range, considering how he's playing right now, so I'll take advantage of this discount too. And then wrapping up the defenseman there with Tori Krug of the St. Louis Blues, who I thought was just a little too cheap here at $3,900. He's got two goals to assist, four points here in his past five games, while hitting 14 plus DraftKings points in three of those five games. Not bad at all considering his price. He logs around 20 minutes per night and gets time on that number one power play, where we should see the Blues a handful of times tonight, as the Dallas Stars currently rank fourth in the NHL this year. And and minor penalties taken. And then I got a couple of goaltenders here for you tonight. If you want to go with the safe route, I think you go with Logan Thompson of the Vegas Golden Knights, who are sitting as heavy favorites on the money line right now at minus 285. That makes sense considering the matchup against the Columbus Blue Jackets, but I think there's some really nice value on this slate as well. A couple of goaltenders here in the low 5k range that I like. First being Vitek Vanacek of the New Jersey Devils, who is now 10-2-0 this season with a goals allowed average of 2.0 five and a save percentage of 0.923 and no team in the NHL is currently playing better than the New Jersey Devils right now so that's primarily why I like this pick and this should be a lower scoring game between the Devils and Rangers in general tonight and then I got Valet Husso there and again this does look like a tough matchup on paper here against the Toronto Maple Leafs so I understand if you do want to fade it but at $7,200 here I really like the upside especially in tournaments Husso has been good this year for the Red Wings with 
with a 9-2-3 record, currently riding a four-game winning streak, where he has a goals allowed average of 2.39 and a save percentage of .919. Again, a tough matchup here, but at $7,200, I like that as a tournament play. And as always, going to wrap up the spreadsheet here with three low-priced options or sub-4K forward plays. First guy I got there is Tyler Bertuzzi of the Detroit Red Wings, currently playing on the second line in number two power play. He actually just returned from injury a handful of games ago, but he's third on the team in scoring chances over their past four games, where he's racked up one goal and two assists. Next is Nick Paul of the Tampa Bay Lightning, currently playing on that second line with Steven Stamkos and Alex Kalorn, while getting time on that number two power play, as well as the penalty kill. He's logging around 17 minutes per night, and he's been very productive this year with nine goals, six assists, 15 points through 20 games, and has a great matchup here tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. Now on the other side of that game, I like Jack Quinn as well, currently playing on the second line in number two power play. We saw the Sabres actually shuffle some things on their power play in yesterday's practice, so keep an eye on that. I didn't see Quinn there, but he's been primarily playing on that second power play for most of the year, and he is actually second on the team in scoring chances over their past four games, which has led to two goals, two assists, and 11 shots on net. And then to wrap up this video here, want to talk a little prize picks with you guys, but I just did my first initial look, and I'm not really in love with anything. We have some pretty tight lines here, considering it is a six-game slate, so I'm going to go through these a little more closely, do my research like I always do, and I'll let you know my final picks in a comment below on this video, and I'll be sure to pin that comment as well. And don't forget, I am posting those in my Discord too. If you want to join that, there's a link in the description below. Now, for those of you who have not signed up yet but want to get in on this hockey action, we got a long season ahead of us, folks, so don't be afraid to join. You should definitely take advantage of my promo code, though, if you do want to sign up, which is Griff. G-R-I-F-F. -F. If you use that promo code upon signing up, prize picks will match your deposit up to $100. Now, you don't have to put $100 in either. You want to put in $50, they'll match that $50. You want to put in $20, they'll match that $20. Again, they will match anything up to $100 as long as you're using my promo code GRIFF. G-R-I-F-F -F, upon signing up. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank y'all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content here on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Let's have ourselves a great day here, folks. Let's win some money on this six-game slate. In the meantime, I'm out of here.